Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. This is Ted Newberry over here at good old Union States Casualty. Well, hi, Ted. What's this I hear about you going off the deep end a couple of weeks ago and getting yourself engaged? To, uh, what's her name, uh, Mary Ann Hooper? Idle rumor, son, just idle rumor. Oh, since when does an idle rumor hit the society pages of the Sunday paper? Oh, that. You mean this was just another false alarm? Just a sly bit of skullduggery by Mary Ann's mother. <laughs> she figured if it hit the papers, then I'd have to pop the question to her darling daughter. But Johnny, my boy, it backfired on her. How do you mean? When Mary Ann saw that blurb, she got so mad, she not only won't speak to her mother, she won't even see or talk to me. <laughs> Instead of you having to worm your way out of a romance again. Right. Thanks to dear old Mama, and without having to go through any soppy farewell scenes, I'm back in circulation and ready to play the field. Again. Well, just you wait, though, Ted. Huh? When you do fall, and I mean all the way, including the marriage route, you are going to fall so hard the crash will be heard halfway around the world. No, Johnny. The only girl in this world I could ever really take seriously who has the looks and figure and brains and wit and charm and all the other attributes. Oh? Who that? Uh, Pandora. Pandora Peters. The most beautiful, most charming, most everything gal I ever knew. So when she does finally come to see me, see and talk to me, okay, what happens? Oh, tell me. All she wants to know is how and where and when she can see and talk to you. Well, you can't win them all, you know. What was that? You heard me. So it looks like you're the lucky one. And, uh, she's really everything you say she is? Everything. So I smothered my feelings and set up a date for you, subject, of course, to your confirmation. When? Today, okay? Why not? What time? 2.30. That's about a half an hour from now. Great. Now, let's think about the place. It's all set. Oh, it is, hmm? Where? In this cozy, quiet little office of mine. Oh, now, wait a minute, Ted. That's what I suggested. That's what she agreed to, so that's the way it'll have to be. Oh, Teddy, you're a bum. Take it or leave it, Johnny. Well? I'll be there. <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Union States Casualty Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the nugget of truth matter. I shaved, showered, put on a clean shirt and a new tie, taking my time about it, then spent item one, $1.30, for a cab into Ted Newberry's office at Union States. Ah, here he is, the answer to a fair maiden's prayer. You look like a million, Johnny. Hiya, Ted. Sit down, huh? Sure. But I thought I said 2.30. You mean I'm late? Late? Let's see, it's only 2.18. Oh, you really made time. <laughs> After that pitch you gave me, what did you expect? Ah, uh, that Pandora. Well, yeah, where is she? Oh, but there's one thing I just plain forgot to tell you. Yes, Teddy, like what? Johnny, uh... She's married. Well, no reaction? Mm. Well, I suppose I could take off my jacket and mop up the floor with you. Well, let's say you could try. And certainly it is the very least you deserve. But what's the use? All that buildup was just to drag me out of my nice, comfortable apartment and down here to take on some kind of assignment. Now, just wait till you see her. Sure. But what's it all about, Teddy? Well, the guy to whom she's happily married is young Philip Truesdale Peters. Good family and all that, but no money. Mm -hmm. That is not much at the moment. But Johnny, thanks to some electronic gadget he's invented and with her dough to get him started. Wait a minute, Ted. Is that the new little plant about ten blocks east of here? That's the one. And one of these days, maybe he'll make it. Well, good for him. Good for that money of hers, you mean. Oh, she's loaded? No, but she has enough. Anyhow, they're both clients of ours, straight life policies. How much, then? Something over a hundred thousand apiece. Hmm. 
And each of them is the other's beneficiary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get any wild ideas. In spite of the fact that he needs money to push this invention of his? Well, don't worry. He doesn't need her dead to get it. Well, just the same, Teddy. It's... Oh, now, come on, Johnny. Give that suspicious mind of yours a rest for a change. The way you talk sometimes, you'd suspect your own mother of murdering for a couple of bucks. Well, maybe I do go overboard <laughs> once in a while. But... Hey, what's the matter? Through this portal, it's about to pass the most beautiful girl in the world. What? You said, Newberry, I'm the biggest flatterer in the world. <laughs> if only that handsome husband of yours wasn't bigger than I am. But come in, my lovely, come in. Thank you. Mrs. Peters, Pandora, this is Johnny Dollar. Well, hi. Johnny. I'll say this. What I stood there staring at was worth staring at. Twenty-five or twenty-six, maybe. Tall, willowy, blonde. A faultless complexion with just enough makeup to enhance her natural beauty. Eyes a kind of gray-green with little smile wrinkles at the corners. A cute little tilt to her nose and soft, full lips. Mmm. And a darned attractive figure in a dress that didn't hurt it one bit. But there was something missing. Or maybe it was the other way around. Something there that shouldn't have been there. In her voice? In her eyes? I'm not sure. But there was a subtle coldness there that wasn't quite right. Not with all that beauty. The calm, calculating female that's invariably more deadly than the male? I wondered... I said hi, Johnny. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. And did I lie to you, Johnny, about this gorgeous, glamorous creature? <laughs> oh, not Teddy. What so help me how anybody like you could ever have any problems, Pandora? I but just... I do have one. And I'm afraid it's a pretty serious one. That's why I wanted to see you, Johnny. Well, what is it, Pandora? Johnny, somebody is threatening to murder me. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here, Pan, you, you better sit down and tell us what this is all about. Yes, thank you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That's all right. I am. Just the key to the Peters family car. Yeah. Thank you. Wait a minute. What? A little charm on this keychain. How about that? A little golden skull. Mm, very unique. Looks hand-carved. Well, it is, Johnny. From a single nugget that my grandfather found out in California back in the 1800s. Oh? It's my good luck talisman. Well, if you're being threatened, honey, you'd better hang on to it. Don't you worry, I will. But now, let me tell you. Yes, I think you'd better. Well, it started about two months ago. Little notes stuck into the mailbox. We live out on Barkley Drive, you know. Better put that down, Johnny. It's 128 Barkley Drive. Oh, I'll remember it. Go on, Pandora. It was right after Phil got the final patent on his invention. Uh, just what is that invention, by the way? Oh, it's some kind of an electronic battery, I guess you'd call it. Mm-hmm. Just a tiny little thing that might be used in rockets or something. I see. And Philip hopes to make a lot of money with it. You don't sound too enthusiastic about it. Oh, well, I wasn't. At first, Johnny. It looked to me and my lawyer like just a waste of time and money for him to work on it. But when those notes started... Well, I told Philip to go ahead with it. Uh, at least until the money ran out. So he put up that little factory building and he's buying machinery and all sorts of things for it. The threatening notes made you change your mind? Yes. Why? Because I'm just plain stubborn, I guess. Well, what'd they say? Well, the first one started out with a quotation. A kind of a religious thing. What was it, do you remember? What profit is it a man if he gained the whole world but suffer the loss of his own soul. Uh Uh-huh. And then it went on to say that for one person alone to profit from such a device was all wrong, was sinful. Unless you give it to the whole world, you'll be sorry. That sort of thing. That doesn't seem like such a dire threat, Pandora, and what's more, it was meant for your husband. Well, that's what we thought, Johnny. And Phil just laughed at it. He said it was the work of some crackpot. Just the same, Pan. He should have taken it to the police. Well, he did, Teddy. And their opinion? They agreed with Phil. Because of that word sinful, they said it was probably some religious fanatic that such things happen all the time. Mm. But then more of them came. And they got more threatening. 
threats against my life, Johnny. Your husband's life, you mean? Well, we still felt so. And the police gave Philip a sort of bodyguard for a while. But then yesterday, another one came in the mail. It was addressed to me. In my name. And it said... Yeah? It said that... Oh, here. Here, Johnny. I, I made this copy of it. Well, let's see. Blind, foolish woman. It is you who are guilty. Because of your money and that device of the devil. It is you who must die. And very soon. Do you see, Johnny, why I'm worried now? Oh, darn well I'd be, you poor gal. Pandora, yes. the police have the originals of the notes? Well, yes, but they say it's just the work of some fanatic who's trying to scare us. I don't think so now. Now I'm frightened. Now? What? You weren't frightened for your husband when you thought they were meant for him? Oh, well, no. Because, well, he just sort of passed them off. He laughed at them. The way the police did. But now, well, don't you see? Yeah, um, maybe I do. Now, what do you mean by that, Johnny? Or, well, maybe they're right. Maybe I am getting all upset over nothing. Maybe it's just some crackpot. But won't you find out, Johnny? Won't you make sure? Pandora, you very well. What are your plans for the rest of the day? Well, I, I can, can't just stay locked up in the house all the time. Of course not. At least not unless you've got some police protection out there. Yes, well... Where's Phil now? Over at the new plant. Huh? It's in operation already? No, but he goes down every day in case they deliver machinery and furniture and things. And what time does he get home? The bus always drops him off in front of the house about 5.15. And your plans meantime? Well, I have to do some shopping and have a fitting here in town about 3.30. That'll take about an hour. Yeah. Then I'll drive out to that farmer's market on Spring Road where I always buy the meat. I promised to a steak tonight. And then? Then it'll be time to go home and get dinner ready. At least that's what I planned. But what should I do? Well, until I've had a talk with the police, I see no reason for you to change those plans. Now, listen, Johnny, she needs protection, so if there's anything I can do... Oh, no, it's all right, Teddy. With Johnny on our side now, I think everything will be all right. You don't feel that you need police protection? Well, do you? I mean, until you find out how serious these threats really are. Unless the police convince me otherwise. I'll be in touch, Pam. Good. Thank you. I feel better already, Johnny. You're a darling. And thank you, too, Teddy, dear. Bye. What a gal. I don't get it. Huh? What do you mean you don't get it? Teddy, there is something very fishy about this thing. Very fishy. Expense account item two, a dollar twenty for a cab back to my apartment where I picked up my own car, then headed out in the direction of the Peters' home, way out on Barclay Drive. But after driving all of half a dozen blocks, the car suddenly conked out on me. By the time I got a tow from the auto club to a service station and a repair job on my carburetor by the slowest mechanic I ever saw, it was after five o'clock. So instead, I drove to police headquarters and talked to Sergeant Bill Budd. Johnny, I've been on top of this thing from the very first of those notes to Peters. Or to his wife. And the last one apparently was addressed to her. The last one, yeah. Well, if I were you, I'd put somebody on that gal 24 hours a day, Sergeant, until we find out where those notes are coming from. Now, you listen to me, Johnny. Go ahead. That's just what we did for him right in the beginning for nearly two months. Good men do not even he had any idea they were on him looking out for him. What happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You figure the notes were just the work of some nut? That's what I told them. Meantime, we nearly broke our necks trying to find out where they were coming from. We bore down on every fanatic, every troublemaker in the town, and we know them all. Nothing. Then, suddenly, I got wise. How do you mean? You know very much about those two, the Peterses. Well, frankly, no. Well, in the first place, they aren't as lovey-dovey as they look. No? No, sir. And she has the money, Johnny. Some money, anyhow. Yes, so I understand. I know it for a fact that she didn't want to sink a lot of it in that crazy invention of his. Crazy? Well, he couldn't get any of the big companies interested in it. I know that. But he was bound he'd go ahead with it. You know what I think? What, Sergeant? I think she started writing those notes in the hopes of scaring him out of it, out of spending her dough on it. You see, if he did scare and quit by himself, then he wouldn't blame her for his giving up on it. And, uh, Johnny, yeah. that would explain how those notes were getting to him, in spite of all our attempts to locate the source. See? Well, it's a possibility, I suppose. But what about the one addressed to her? She hoped that would be the clincher, that's all. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, your little theory might explain why she didn't jump at the chance to have a bodyguard. You suggested that to her? Yeah. But uh, there is still another possibility, Sergeant. You mean that he's been writing them? Mm-hmm. So nobody suspect him if he knocked her off to collect all her nice insurance money. Right. In other words, until we can clear this thing up... Wait a minute, Johnny. You think I'm going to put tails on both of them, on their house, on that plant for 24 hours a day? Well, no. Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant Bud. Uh, Mr. Peters. Sergeant, I knew it. I told you something like this would happen. And don't you see, after that last threatening letter, it was Pandora. It was she. This killer was oh, after. Now, wait, wait a minute. Because it's been... Her money going into my invention, into the plant, and oh, this is terrible, I terrible, terrible. Now, wait, wait a minute. What do you want, Conroy? I'm sorry, Sergeant. I try to keep him from barging in this way. What's the matter with you? Aren't you going to do something about this terrible thing that's happened? Oh, well, what terrible thing? You know what he's talking about, Conroy. Uh, yes, sir, Sergeant. You see, I'm the one that found the body. The what did you say? The body. Yes, don't you understand? Don't you understand my wife? Pandora, she's been murdered. Frontiers changed rapidly today. Mostly, they seem to expand. Lately, they show even promise of expanding right into outer space. CBS News is presently covering the effort to break into space, and when the time comes to report news out in space, CBS newsmen will be looking for space helmets with room for microphones. Through the facilities of the CBS radio network, expanded CBS News, brought into your home hourly, combines with this station's local reports to give you up-to-the-minute accounts of events that change the world. Listen to expanded CBS News every hour on the hour weekdays here. wife was murdered, Mr. Peters? Yes, yes, Pandora. Somebody killed her. When, Mr. Peters? Where? How should I know? I asked this policeman. He's the one who found her. You didn't see her? No, ask him. He's the one who knows about this horrible, terrible, awful thing. Conroy? If only he had taken those letters seriously, we could have prevented now, this. Mr. Peters, if you want our help, you've got to calm down and pull yourself together. Right here. Here now. Maybe you better take a slug of No, it. no, no, no. I'm... Now take a I'm drink. Sorry, take sorry, a drink I'm of this sorry. brandy. Now go on. Go ahead. All right. All right. Thank you. Right. I'm sorry. Please, officer, tell tell them what what you found. Yes. Go ahead, Conroy. Well, I was out in my prowl car, you see, in the Spring Road section, my regular beat. Yeah. Well, somebody reported there was a car blocking that little side road into the woods, about half a mile this side of the Spring Road shopping section. You know. Where. Uh... Pandora went to the meat market. Yes, yes, she always bought the meat at the same place out there. And she said that for dinner tonight... Oh, okay, would... okay, okay. I can't... All right, now, wait. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, sir. Well, I investigated, and I found this car parked there with nobody inside of it, and the motor was still running, you know? Go on. So, well, I decided maybe I'd better look around, so I did. And that's when I found her. Over at the side of that little pond that's out there. Her head all bashed in. Oh, terrible way to catch us, Sam. Some other please. way you... Now, come on, please, please. Go I'm on, sorry, Conroy. Sir. Well, I went on back to her car, cut off the engine, and then went back to the prowl car. Got on the horn to headquarters to Lieutenant Briggs. He's in homicide, you know? Yes, yes, I know. Well, him and Doc Campbell arrived at the scene a few minutes later, and I told them all I knew, and they took over to the best of my knowledge, you're still out there. Well, did you find the weapon that was used on her, Conroy? Oh, no, 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 sir. You asked the sergeant that got thrown into that muddy little pond. You'll never find it in there. Yeah, maybe. No, sir. I mean, with all the mud in the bottom of that thing? Yeah. There must well, be a layer uh, of it 10, 12 feet deep in the bottom, yeah, you know? Yeah, okay. I mean, with all the trees around it. Okay, Conroy. And I know. Account of some kids trying oh. to swim in it last summer. Conroy. And one of them got stuck. I had to haul them out. And if I hadn't have gotten there when I Conroy, did... Conroy, where and when did you find Mr. Peters? Oh, I drove right out to his house, Mr. Dollar. I figured somebody ought to tell him. I see. You were uh, home by then, Mr. Peters? Yes. I was... Worried sick when I found she wasn't there and had left no message. It wasn't like her. And, well, after those threatening letters, I'd, I, I knew something was wrong. I knew it. And, well, when this officer came and told me what he'd found, Pandora... Yes, sir. That's when he insisted I bring him right here to see you, Sergeant. Yes. You, uh, you didn't take him to the spot out there in the woods. No, sir. He had me bring him directly in here. And, Sergeant, if you, if you don't do something about this, if, if, 
If you don't find his now, killer... Look, we're going to do everything we can now, Mr. Well, if you'd done something before instead of just... Just talking about it, this wouldn't have happened. Mr. Peters... No, no, there was nothing to worry about. It's only some crackpot, some troublemaker. It was a killer. I can't understand that. It was a killer. Well, I'm telling you, we're going to do everything we can. Mr. Peters... Now, excuse me, i got to take this. Sergeant Biden. My wife has been murdered. Yes, he is, Lieutenant. For you, Conroy. Me? Huh? Okay, thanks. Now, yes, sir. let's see now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I... Well, well gee, I'm sorry. Well, now what has he done? Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Sure, whatever you say, I'll be out there right away. Did you pull another boner, Conroy? Well, I, uh... I stuck the keys to that car in my pocket after I turned off the engine. The lieutenant wants them. Well, go ahead, then. Take them out to him. Wait a minute. Can I see those keys, Conroy? Oh, sure, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. What? Just an ordinary set of car keys, Dollar? Yeah. And that's why they give us the answer to this whole thing. Yes, sir. Oh, I hope so. You have a set of these, too, haven't you, Mr. Peters? Why, yes, of course. May I see him, please? Yes, of course. Here you are. Thanks. Hey, will you look at that, Sergeant? Yeah, some gold nugget carved to look like a skull. It's a, a, a sort of um, a good luck talisman. Good luck? Yes. I'm afraid, Mr. Peters, not for you. What? These are the keys your wife had early this afternoon when I talked to her. That means that to get hold of them, you had to be with her. Between the time I saw her and the time her body was found. Dollar. That also means, Mr. Peters, that... Well, do you want to tell us? Well, I had to. Don't you see, I, I had to kill her. Because of the money. Because I, I needed the money for my invention. I had to kill her. Sergeant, don't you think somebody better take this all down? I sure do. Thanks. Thanks. So, with that full confession, complete with signature, there'll be no problem. He did it. He'll pay for it. Expense account total, and I may as well include the work on my car. Do you think you can afford all of 20 bucks? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the most unlikely crook I've met in a long, long time. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. by Jack Johnstone. Produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by F.O. Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Rita Lloyd as Pandora Peters, Jim Stevens as Ted Newberry, Don McLaughlin as Sergeant Bud, Court Benson as Philip Peters, and Bill Lipton as Conroy. Be sure to join us next week same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking. Sports Time scores for the fans Monday through Saturday on the CBS Radio Network.